Hey guys, Matt here with the Jio Nation. Today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the setup that I use to record with, the techniques that I use as I ride to record my shots, uh, whether you like them or not. I get a lot of people that ask me about them, and so uh, here we go. Okay, so there is an inherent problem with showing you exactly what I'm recording with and how I record, because I'm using it to record, <laughs> and so, it's a little bit difficult to show you what I'm using when I'm in the act of using it. What I do have is a backup camera, which is the same camera that I have here. This is like a, an emergency camera just in case this one goes kaput on me. I carry it around with me uh, just in case. I bought it when I was with my dad because I thought he'd like to use it, but uh, he passed away before he had the chance. So I'm trying to put it to some good use. So why don't I open this one up and tell you a little bit about what I'm using right here. This is a DJI aluminum tripod mount which connects to a DJI extension pole and which in turn connects to a Canon G7X Mark II which is just a fantastic camera. It has a flip up screen which allows me to tap on focus uh, as I'm riding. The lens is retractable so I can just shut her down um, and I can put it in my pocket or in my side bag here which is where it sits. The other thing that I've added is, is I've glued a, uh, it's a dead cat, a uh, piece of dead cat to the top microphone holes um, and this actually helps a ton with regards to the wind noise. But let me switch over and record on this so that I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is the camera now that I'm doing the video on. And you can see these five holes here. When I glue the fur to it, I take some super glue and I glue all the way around the outside edge. I make sure not to get it inside these holes because then you're gonna ruin the microphone. And I also glue down the uh, flash mount because I never take pictures with flash on this camera so I never feel the need to. And then I glue down the dead cat piece. And then when the dead cat is glued on and I know that it is dried, I go again and I do a bead of glue around the outside edge of the dead cat to make sure it's totally sealed. Because there's always a problem with regards to the air getting under the dead cat. And the dead cat can't do its job if the air is actually getting underneath it and in that gap. I used to have a Velcro piece that I would Velcro a piece of hair to it. And that Velcro between the hook and the loop, there's a lot of areas where air can actually penetrate and you end up getting wind noise problems. I actually had a big fan and I was blowing air across the different types of connection methods I had. I tried to glue it, I tried to uh, use, use tape, I tried to uh, Velcro it, a bunch of different things. And the only way that I got a 100% seal was to do this super glue and then re-super glue around the outside edges. It really works. One of the reasons why this is so great when I'm riding is that the bottom tripod mount... <laughs> you see? You see what kind of problem I'm having? Now I want to show you this but I need a tripod to mount this camera onto so that I can show you. It's a chicken before the egg thing and I'm not sure how, how to fix it. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it between my legs. The great thing about this end here is it can act like a tripod and I can set it on the ground. I'll show you in a little bit. But the other thing is that it's heavy. This piece, if you remove it from the extension pole, is quite heavy. It's almost the weight of the camera. What happens is the there's no balance here. The way that a gimbal normally works is that you have like a weighted bottom uh, or a simulated weighted bottom with, with the uh, electronic ones today, but you need that weighted bottom in order to give you some, some sort of stability, some sort of counterweight at the bottom. So if the camera and the counterweight are like the same weight, then when you hold it at the neck of the tripod or even when you extend it out or hold it outwards like this, you're counterbalancing the weight of the camera extended all the way out there. If I didn't have the tripod end on it, it would actually start to shake and I wouldn't be able to control the camera the way I can right now. 
So the, the tripod bottom is extremely important. But the other thing that the tripod end does is it allows me to do some amazing pass-bys and just set up my camera really quick on the side of the road so I can ride past it. So I open up the tripod, I can set it on the side of the road, like there. It sits up quite high, and so I turn the camera where I want it to be. I hit record. I make sure that it's solid. And now I've got a, a recording tripod that has almost no profile. It's not like I, I have to worry about setting it next to something. And I can ride back. And then I can ride past on the shot. Hey, Luke. So that's a great use of, of this setup. And it's something I really like, especially with this rig. You can set it next to a dining room table if you're filming yourself eating a meal or you're doing some sort of a food segment. A lot of times there's not a lot of space next to the table to set up the camera. And if you have a tripod that's like tripoding out, that you know, you're sitting down and the tripod's coming into your, into your personal space if you're trying to get the camera right against the table area, you might have a problem where one of the legs is sticking out into an aisle way. Whereas what this does is so slender that it goes all the way down to the bottom before it spreads out that you end up not having any trouble at all with regards to uh, having it totally inconspicuous. A lot of times I have people that say, I don't even know you recorded that. I didn't even see the camera set up. Whereas if I had a tripod, like an actual traditional tripod, that you'd have to pull the legs apart, you'd have to set it up on the table, it's, it's obstructing space around it. This doesn't obstruct space. The other thing that's really cool about it is the amount of distance you get from the top of the extension pole to the bottom it allows you to get a really wide shot. Now you guys have given me some some beef for for my lack of uh, having such a wide shot. I end up getting really close. A lot of that is because in its standard length, the camera's about this long. And so if I tip the camera towards me, like this, and I hold the camera out like this, the distance that you have is not perfect it's about it's about this far so you can you can't really see too much around me but as I've been trying to do recently with more of these videos I'm trying to uh, appease you guys and show you a little bit more of the surroundings when I'm riding I've been trying to extend this out normally it's a two-hand operation but one hand is holding the camera so now it's a, a leg operation okay so then I extend the extend it out I flip up the camera I turn it on I hit record and now instead of this I get this so it's a much more wide shot instead of this I get this you know a much more uh, all-encompassing shot you can see me all over so you've got a lot of opportunity here to move the camera around and get uh, a quite a wide shot I really enjoy having this this extension arm uh, fully extended. The only problem is that as an arm length away, you can get it open quicker, you can get it shooting quicker, and it's, it's not in the other lane of traffic. For example, this camera now is in the other lane of traffic, and I have to constantly be looking backwards or using my rear view mirrors here to make sure that I'm not, you know, going to lose my camera if somebody rides into it on the, on the side. It can be a little bit goofy riding around with this big huge camera sticking out and if you're in an urban area with a lot of people riding e-bikes around you or whatnot you tend to want to make yourself as small a footprint as possible but yeah i love it i'm going to leave links to uh, all of these cameras uh the dead cat that i use uh that i end up gluing on the dead cat i use on this camera right here is actually a product existing that uses velcro but i ripped the velcro off and glued it on instead but the actual dead cat is still pretty awesome and it's a good quality product. As a matter of fact, I carry an extra one with me just in case I want to use this camera, which is my backup, and I'll, I'll glue it onto this one. For now, I'm just going to leave it native without anything sticking onto it so that it'll last a long time. So yeah, this is the riding setup that I use and this is the camera that I use. The dead cat is actually quite um, impressive. You can see her right here. You hear that? But if I go here, so like I said, I'll leave links to the dead cat that I use, 
to the camera that I use, to the extension pole that I use, and to the tripod that I use. I've been able to convince quite a few successful YouTubers to adopt this setup. One of them's Winston Serbaza has one, and a few of my friends have set up their, th themselves with some. And it's a really, really versatile setup. And uh, one more comment for the cyclists out there that mount things to like your stand-up bars or to your frame. Your arm is like a natural shock absorber. So if you were to rig up a camera directly to the bike, you're gonna have a lot of shake as that bike goes over rough terrain. But what happens with your body is the transference of the shaking from the frame goes through your butt, into your chest cavity, out through your bicep, into your forearm before it even gets to the tripod mount. And then it goes to the extension pole. And by the time it gets to the camera, all that shaking and movement has been dulled out. It's not as good as, say, a, a professional gimbal, but I don't like to carry a gimbal because you know what that means? I've got to carry extra batteries. With those batteries, I've got to carry um, cables and chargers to charge those batteries. I've got to carry a, a, a gimbal, which is a, a fairly sensitive piece of equipment. This is, is about as basic as you can get. It is not going to break. If anything's gonna break, the camera's gonna break. But I don't want my gimbal to break, and then suddenly, how am I gonna take video? This is a stick with a camera at the end of it and a tripod at the bottom. You can't get much more simple than that. And it does the job pretty well. Anyways, take it easy, guys. Like I said, I'll leave links for everything in the, in the description below. Check them out. Uh, if you'd like to purchase, please purchase through the links that I gave you through the Amazon store. It helps me out and uh, I appreciate that. And if you have any ideas for future gear uh, proposals, this was something I pulled from a uh, suggestion last week. Take it easy, have a great weekend. And Jayo from the Pengu Island chain in Taiwan. I have a feeling that <laughs> this is gonna come out horrible. <laughs> but whatever, you asked for it. It's really difficult to record yourself showing the recording setup that you record on using another camera without the recording set that set up that you normally record on it's like juggling